this clip and continue with your calls of uh, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth having a global impact. Let me say it again, a global impact. I want to thank one of our great sponsors. It's MySolarBackup.com. That's MySolarBackup.com. A lot of things can cut off your electrical power, hurricanes, snow, ice storms. We had a power outage in here uh, just before I'm getting ready to play a clip. Listeners should move toward getting off the grid, and here's a good way to do just that. A solar-powered generator is now available from our longtime sponsor, Solutions from Science. You can get an emergency power backup kit, which consists of a power source of 1,800 watts. It's an 1,800-watt generator and a high-efficiency solar panel designed to provide endless electricity. It's MySolarBackup.com or call 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Six five. All right, let's let's just get right into this clip of architects and engineers for 9/11 Truth really exposing the controlled demolitions of World Trade Center One, World Trade Center Two, and World Trade Center Seven on 9/11. So, Professor Niels Harrett, you examined the rubble that came from the World Trade Center. What did you find in it? Well, in there we find remains of what we characterize as a thermitic material and this is a very energetic material which can be used either for melting iron or it can be designed as an explosive. So what effect would the nanothermite have had on the collapse of the towers on September the 11th? Actually within the group of authors behind this paper which we published in April there are diverging opinions about what this nanothermite was used for and in my opinion we should not speculate in a, in a scenario for the demolition but there's no doubt that the three towers were demolished on 9-11 uh, so um, but beyond that there is very solid evidence for that some thermite has been used for melting the steel beams we should not, I do not know, we do not know if the thermite that we have found is the same thermite which has been used for melting the beams. It's very, very possible the different varieties was used and I personally am certain that uh, conventional explosives were used too in abundance. And when you say in abundance, how much do you mean? Tons. hundred tons. So many, not, many, many tons. We're not just talking about nanothermite, in fact. We're talking about both nanothermite and conventional explosives used in large quantities. Yeah, but we have not found remains or transits of conventional explosives. Actually, we have suggested and recommended to NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, that they should look for remains or traces of explosives, and they have refused to do so every time. They have not investigated it. And in terms of the nanothermite, the traces of which you did find, uh, what are the possible explanations for its presence in the World Trade Center? I mean, could it have been in the airplanes? Is it, could it have been a naturally occurring substance in any way? Well, I, the two last questions or options I can definitely rule out. It cannot have come from the airplanes. And, well, if it had been there on beforehand, those who put it there, I think, urge them to step forward and tell us how and why it got there. One thing which has been very mentioned frequently in the discussion following our publication is that this could be the primer paint which was applied to the steel beams in order to prevent corrosion. And much of the, many of the ingredients are the same in terms of iron oxide, as I told you which is the red color you see on steel beams usually when it's protected, it's the, the iron oxide. So some of the chemicals in there are the same. But the composition of the primer paint used, there are two very good reasons for this not being paint, in my opinion. One is that the, the, the composition, chemical composition of the paint, primer paint used in World Trade Center, according to NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, is vastly different from what we, we are seeing. To be specific, I say we are missing large amounts of chromium and, and um, zinc and magnesium. 
Next, which can be understood by everyone, is that the paint applied on the steel beams are stable to elevated temperatures. NIST did experiments with the steel beams because they wanted to use the, the appearance of the paint as a measure for the temperature the steel beams had been exposed to. And let me be specific. So when you heat up this steel beam at 250 degrees centigrade, it starts cracking. And this is because the steel expands more than the paint. So they get what they call mod cracks. And it keep on cracking until a temperature about 650 degrees, where it starts peeling off, forming scales. This continues to about 800 degrees when, uh, when this scaling becomes extensive, uh, what you say, excessive. But it does not burn. So the paint on the steel beams is stable beyond 800 degrees centigrade. Now the stuff we have found ignites at 430 degrees centigrade. So it is not the primer paint. So what I can say is, is this nanothermite? Well, it quacks like a duck, it waddles like a duck, it looks like a duck, maybe it's a duck. All right, let's pull the clip right there. The other half is also posted at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv right now. And like he says, if it quacks like a duck, it looks like a duck, and it acts like a duck, it's probably a duck. I'm going to take a couple phone calls, and then we're going to go to this global governance gore clip. Uh, the man who is go only going to benefit even further from this latest global warming legislation that has been hoisted upon the American people and really the world populace. Uh, you know, we're going to be the ones paying the big dividends out of this, the industrialized countries, especially the United States. Uh, Europe is also going to be... I, I, folks, I can't even tell you how nightmarish this is and how poorly guised it is. This is about global government. I mean, when I, when I first met Alex Jones for the first time at the first conference on 9-11 in Chicago... And I was discussing with him, you know, well, what's up with uh, this, this global warming? And he said, look, it's going to be used to try to get you into a worldwide carbon-based tax program and carbon credit system. I almost laughed at him. I'm like, come on, Alex, that can't be true. And I looked into it, and it is the real deal, and it is now coming to fruition, folks. It is a reality. All right, Chris in Florida, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Yes, have you seen the the humming bot that uh, Wired Magazine just put up, uh, put a video up on uh, July 2nd? No, no, is this uh, one of these microbots they got? It's pretty small. It's amazingly small. It's about, I'd say about two or three inches, I'd estimate, and uh, it's called a humming bot. It looks like a hummingbird, and it can uh, hover around. They're trying to. They're saying how they're trying to improve upon it to withstand mm -hmm. winds, but of course, they probably have something much more advanced. And, well, what kind of uh, sensors does it have? Does it have a camera where it, where it wirelessly transmits things, or is it just a ga well, uh, data gatherer? What's the deal? It's remote control. Apparently, it uh, has a man uh, in a plastic enclosed room just uh, directing it around with a remote control right in front of him taking off from the ground and landing and doing different things so if a humming bot flies into you and, and you and in the future you catch something like the h47n326 bird flu it's because some humming bot munching or hot pockets munching this face drooling teen synced into an xbox is just blowing off some steam and uh blowing away people for the chip terror mongers and, and, and by the way i want to explain to people just because they're using an xbox controller doesn't mean it's affiliated with xbox just like any piece of electronic it, it's guided by software so they just re-engineer the software to uh, you can actually take your xbox controller and through a device plug it into your computer and use it as a controller for your computer as well so they're they're doing this because people are already acclimated to the xbox style controller you're going to see even crazier controllers come out a as it progresses but again they like to get you acquainted to the technology you're used to and then give you another use for that like you said to control a micro hummingbird apparatus uh, folks again it's reality we're going to Hopefully play that video on the Alex Jones Show tomorrow. I don't have the time today. I thank you for the call. One more call, and then we'll get to Gore. Uh, Mike in Florida. Mike, you're on the line. Hey, what's going, hey, what's going on? How you doing, sir? Yeah, uh, I was, I'm was. i kind of interested in the fact that you were covering the uh, climate bill that they passed in Congress earlier. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason being is because I contacted my two state senators. In I got to let you go, bill. man. The, the dog the dog barking is too much. I appreciate the call. Um, let's talk about the climate bill. It's bad news. It's the biggest tax increase, increase in history. It's going to give them uh, the ability to come into your home and say, you need to fix this, this, and this. And if you don't do so, we're taking it. And then we'll bulldoze the neighborhood after the whole neighborhood can't fix these problems because they're going to go into low-end housing first. Let's go to Gore and his global governance clip.